What's going on, YouTube? We're back with Shades, and we're continuing our Let's Play of Katawa Shoujo. Last time we left off, we did the sex twice in a row again. Jesus Christ. Um, I'm not exactly angry about that. It just annoys me because I have to, I have to increase the amount of um, recording time that I put on this. Because I do want to have 30 minute, 30 minute videos um, that I don't cut out. So, anyway, let's get through it. <clears throat> After a chaotic dash to the station and finding our seats in the otherwise deserted carriage, we promptly crashed. Looking at the time, close to midnight, it's a little surprised that, that few take this particular train. Hanako is fast asleep on Lily's shoulder, and I can only muster the energy to stay awake. The excitement that we had a while ago probably didn't help. I'd probably be pretty depressed about going back to school if my brain wasn't actually working. As it is, though, the sight of the nighttime scenery rolling by is surprisingly beautiful. My... My loud yawn is wholly drawn out by the clacking of the train tracks and the old carriages rattling. So tired. And whose fault is that, he saw. She really does toe the line between insulting and amusing sometimes. Though I manage to wring out a weary, sm a re a weary smile. I look back to the out the window, my reflection just visible on the clear pane. Truth be told, she's perfectly correct. If it weren't for that little interlude a few hours ago, both of us would have a lot of energy. On top of that, we both had to take another bath, very nearly making us late for the train's departure. Yeah, yeah, it was mine. Still getting into the bath with the guy is a dangerous thing to do. Evident evidently. Sorry, I guess I kind of took advantage of the situation back there. Well, I didn't exactly hate it. <clears throat> as she trails off, I look back to her. Her eyes narrow as I, as I see her slightly reddened cheeks and small grin. Her mind obviously elsewhere. She wants the tea! <laughs> Say it. I knew the possibility of it happening was there. I knew it. You're just as dirty-minded as I am. She quickly coughs into her free hand, making her disapproval crystal clear. That's a rather crude way of putting it. Oh, and you, and you would suggest? I merely have a healthy adolescent sex drive. <laughs> Same thing! Same thing! <laughs> She's cute, I guess. So in other words, dirty-minded. Almost seeming to sense the moment, Hanukkah mumbles quietly as she furrows her brow in Lily's lap. Lily looks up, disapproval melts away as she gently smiles and strokes her hand in Hanukkah's long, dark hair. All I can do is watch, watch and smile. If someone were to ask me when I fell in love with her, it wouldn't be able to answer. The best to be able to come up with is it just happened at some point, but I didn't realize it. If someone were to ask me why I love her, though, then I could answer much more easily. You really love Hanukkah, don't you? <clears throat> She gives a deep nod, smiling warmly. It's a pity we have to return to school. She seems to have relaxed so much while we were all away. What do I want to do here? Talk about Hanako, I guess. Talk about Hanako. I wouldn't worry. Hanako's been gaining confidence thanks to you. At least for as long as I've known you two. She gives a self-deprecating sigh. I think I merely provided her with company and support. Since she came to know you, she's opened up much more, even to me. I get the feeling she's understating her influence on Hanako, especially given that before the two came to know each other, Hanako had no friends to speak of. The friends I had in my previous school fulfilled what I had to expect of them. For the most part, simply being there for idle chatter, but in Hanako and Lily, they really feel to be more to their relationship. A part of me envies it, but another can't ignore the fact that school year will be eventually end. After graduation, I really have no idea what Hanako will do. This trip has shown me just how much we've all come to depend on one another. Codependency, I suppose. Hang on, guys, I gotta clear my nose. <sighs> All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry. Indeed, we are all going to have to make decisions. Maybe that's the reason why, despite our return to school also heralding the return to the normalcy of everyday life, I can't help but feeling a little restless. On the bright side, it won't take too long for the summer to holidays to arrive after our exams are finished. We can, ah! we can come back here during the summer holidays if you want. For a moment, she thinks on the notion, her face becoming somewhat distant. I can only guess she's reflecting on all that's happened here. That would be good, I think. I nod approvingly, smiling at her. Summer, together with Lily, this idea seems like a perfect way to spend our holiday. And another piece of paper! Alright! Act 4. Future. Oh, wow! Like, the thing was past, present, future. Wow, that's cool. <clears throat> 
Um, I don't know how much is left, but I know that after the the super happy, super like honeymoon phase, things start getting serious. So, um, yeah, things are about to happen. After the excitement of our trip to the Hokkaido, it seems strange to be right back to the usual daily routine so soon. Indeed, it feels like a normal day, the same as any other. Well, that's what I'd like to think, anyway. To tell the truth, the atmosphere of the entire class, no, the entire school, has changed. While an undercurrent of subdued trepidation has pre had previously pervaded the class, now that the exams are in sight, it's boiled over into frantic studying, rarely seen otherwise. One day until exams start. It's horrific, really, that instead of studying, we went and wasted our time up north. We were such model students, too. Glancing around the class, even the bubbly, ever-energetic Misha seems oddly deflated. She sits at her desk, nervously chewing a pen, while Muto lectures from the front of the class. Wait, on closer inspection, I do believe she's eating it. <clears throat> Tearing my eyes from the sorry spectacle, I turned my attention elsewhere. Hanako sits frantically scribbling in her notebook, her face mere inches away from the page, seemingly trying to record every word that leaves Muto's mouth. Shizune's well, Shizune, cool as a cucumber, she sits diligently taking notes with her attention wholly focused on the front of the class. Truth be told, it's what I should be doing as well, if not for the fact that I feel like I have a pretty good handle on what's being covered already. I wonder how Lily's doing. While she does have a good head on her, she has plenty on her plate. Unlike me, her class representative duties, taking care of Hanako, her other social contacts, her extra English studies, that girl really does take on a lot. The lunchtime bell brings a sigh of relief from the entire class, Muto being no ex exception. I get the feeling he prefer prefers to be the more laid-back atmosphere of his normal classes to the frantic pace of exam preparation we're subjected to right now. He-chan! A what? Help me. I lower my eyelids to half-mast, making clear my attention to doing quite the opposite. Help me, help me, help me! Not going well? Shi-chan's going to be fine, but I think I might die. Am I going to die, He-chan? Will you let me die from all this work? How maudlin. Given that she's neither the brightest student in the class nor the most diligent, it isn't a great surprise that she's finding it hard to cope with the workload. Sorry, Misha, but I've got my own work to do. I thought you and Shizune would be studying together over the long weekend anyway. Studying's too boring to waste a holiday on He-chan. Shopping together was much more fun, wasn't it, Shi-chan? It's only now that I realize she has been looking over to us, and that Misha's arms have been moving like likely all this time, and I must be really I must have I must be really zoned out not to have noticed. What's it with girls and shopping anyway? Even Lily and Hanukkah have dragged me out with them a couple of times. But you went anyway. It's so great to see a guy that likes going shopping. Well my role would probably be best described as pack mule. I can't say I share your enthusiasm about, about the experience. Hey, I like going to the mall. And I like going to outlets. I like that with friends because it's fun just to cut loose and, ha and like just like look at random products. But the actual buying and trying on clothes is annoying to me. Yeah. Back to the exams. You studied after you got back from the days off, didn't you, Shizune? Of course, Hee-chan. It's only sensible to study in the days before. Uh, Misha makes a sound vaguely similar to dying cow. She realizes her folly and unceremoniously flops onto her desk, betrayed even by her best friend. Judging from Shizune's quite, quite frustration, look at Misha. Quite frustrated, look at Misha. She probably told her to study just as she did. Don't worry, you can still gain some grades if you start studying now. Maybe. Misha does not seem overly amused. It seems the bubbly balloon. It seems the bubbly balloon of everlasting cheerfulness has been cruelly popped. Shizune sighing and goes unnoticed by the moping Misha, earning her a quick poke on the shoulder. It ter takes barely a moment for Misha to get back into form. Oh, uh, so what did you co do over the weekend, Hichan? Just took a trip north with Lily and Hanako. It was pretty nice. I see both of them narrowing their eyes at me, their minds surely in the gutter. The fact that their suspicions are founded makes the situation all the more awkward. <laughs> we just studied and went sightseeing. There's nothing more to it. Hmm... As is such a flagrant lie, real, I realize that it may not have been the best step, considering she's his connections and her total lack of restraint when it comes to questioning someone she suspects of telling untruths. I really have no idea how she's going to take it, but she'll find out eventually anyway. It isn't as if she, it's really her business whom I date in any case. And yes, Lily and I are going out now. While Misha receives the news with an enthusiastic smile, she's going to give a long look of mild and somewhat masked by her cool demeanor. Whoever you date is your business. I hope you two go well together. You should give us a look and that says she's the most. She, this is the most cord I could probably receive on the matter. And that's all I wanted, really. After she says this, though, she's then begins to sign something else, then stops herself and shakes herself at Misa to prevent her from translating. 
Normally I think this is strange enough, but the awkwardly casual wave a Shizune gives before walking off with Misha in tow adds to my confusion. Shizune is hardly the kind of person to pull a punch or communicate without forethought. I shrug my shoulder at the duo's odd behavior and look toward Hanako's desk, but seeing that her chair is empty, she's definitely here before, so I guess she just didn't feel like waiting. I'll go grab some food alone then. Walking down the hallway to the unused room that's become a second home to the three students in particular, I mournfully look down the plastic wrap salad roll and juice box in my hand. The cafeteria's food really is unappetizing. Maybe I'll consider this my penance for my recent indiscretions. Opening the door, I notice one less quiet figure than I expected. What? What? It's strange. Despite having known Lily for months, I can't help thinking back to the first time I opened this door and saw her silently sitting in the sunlight. Just as she did then, she slowly opens her eyes, unmoving as they are, and calmly addresses me. Good morning, Hiso. It's afternoon, I think. And has Hanako been around? She's getting out of, out of class without me even noticing. Lily cradles her cheek thoughtfully as I take my seat, uh, my bag taking its place against the clo closest leg of the table and my unsatisfying meal ne neatly set out in front of me. She did appear, for a time. She said she had to study for the upcoming exams and left for the library. We find ourselves not entirely believing her words. Well, at least her intentions are in the right place. She is sweet, but she didn't go this far to let us have our space. I might talk to her about it sometime. Probably for the best. Yeah, um... I'm not exactly the kind of guy that will leave you alone, wet, like, on my own accord, when uh, a couple is hanging out. I will of my own accord from time to time, but sometimes I will overstep my bounds. Um... <clears throat> Um, I do, uh, personally, I do appreciate when people tell me to leave them alone because it's, hey, I was annoying you guys, so thanks for telling me that I was annoying you guys. But, um, for the most part, I, I, sometimes I, I realize that, oh, these guys haven't seen each other for a long time. Oh, these guys don't have enough, a lot of time together, so I will leave them alone. I tend to leave people alone. But for, from time to time when I do, like, hang out with friends, and I do feel lonely uh, often, um... Especially since uh, college keeps me and my friends busy and we don't see each other. And when we do have the chance to hang out, I do tend to over overstep my boundaries. Um, so when I do feel lonely, I tend to like throw caution out the window. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. But anyway, for a while we quietly eat our meals. Lily elegantly nibbling on her sandwiches and sipping her tea as I eat what tastes like a garden sandwich into a, in dry dough. The atmosphere feels slightly strained, neither of us knowing quite what to say to each other now that our small talk is dried up. <laughs> okay. Uh, eventually, we both finish our food, with no conversation forthcoming for quite some time. Eventually, though, Lily's soft voice breaks the silence. A lot happened back there, didn't it? Hmm. Again, silence, with both our minds on the same topic, though. I think I have my feelings on that sorted out. I know everything happened in kind of a hurry, but I don't regret anything that happened in Hokkaido. Not one thing. Hisao? Slowly tense, I take her hands in mine. Have to feel her, have to settle my own nerves. I stand by my words. I stand by my words back there, Lily. I love you, and I won't leave you. I only wish for you to think the same. She silently reflects for a long time, which feels like an eternity. Her reverie comes to an end, and she takes one hand from mine, placing it over them as she leans her body forward and stands out of her chair. After a moment's hesitation, her face slightly pensive, her lips meet mine for a brief moment. My mind feels as if it briefly stopped at that moment, barely registering Lily sitting back in her chair, smiling back at me with ever so slightly reddened cheeks. Hearing that makes me very happy, Hisa. I would be glad to stay with you. Maybe it would be good to slow things down a bit compared to before. We still have school, after all. And our exams. She gives a mischievous giggle, which pr proves to be contagious. That might be a good idea, indeed. Thank you for slowing things down for me. Thank you, because goddamn, like, Emmy just, 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 just wants to fuck like animals. Do you think you'll fare well in your exams? It's only one day until they arrive, as you say. I probably should have studied more, but I think I've got a good enough head to manage. That said, I had, I had to bat off Misha and she's name. Is your class as worried about the exams as mine? She lets out an exasperated sigh, all but confirming it. I'm thankful for the atmosphere becoming a bit lighter. I think so. I've already a been asked for help by two of my classmates, and they'll, know, and they'll no doubt be more. Think of it as your first training being a teacher, maybe? That's probably a good way to think of it. On that note, how are you faring in your English studies? I remember it was far from your strongest subject, and the few sentences you memorized to speak to my mother aren't likely to help. Damn right on that, Mark! You got me. If you don't mind, would you possibly be able to help me in that regard, please? It would be my pleasure to help you, Hisa, but in exchange... 
What? She lowers her eyebrows at me and her coquettish nature tentatively coming to the fore. No problem at all. You're probably better off with some help in your studies, though. She beams a smile at me, one of girlish victory, and that nearly makes me blush. I get that feeling she's aware of how to use her face to twist my judgment, so I should probably be more on guard. Here and now, though, a study group seems like an exp expedient way for both of us to shore up on our more lacking skills. The school bell rings out, reminding us that the time isn't going to stand still. Huh, lunchtime's over already. I'd try to get easy to lose track of the time here. This room's so far from the other clubs and activities, not much sound can reach us. That's probably the most of the reason why. <clears throat> a place far from all the others, alone with just one person whom she loves. As Lily stands and collects her bags and cane, my thoughts are cast back to the time we spent in Hokkaido. <laughs> oh god. We'll always have Hokkaido. Uh, before I go, Akira and I are having a homecoming party in my room tomorrow. Tomorrow, will you be able to come? And back again. <laughs> my schedule is free, and so I should I should be able to make enough room to my study time to make it. Good to hear, Hisao. For what is it, it's worth, I'm glad you're back from Scotland. Once exams are over, we should have some time to ourselves. Hmm, holidays start soon after, too. We can start the holidays with Tanabata, then, just as we promised at the school festival. <laughs> she brings her hand to her cheek and laughs. <laughs> Sorry, guys, my nose is a little runny. And laughs slightly nervously, recalling the events as I silently thank myself for managing to remember. It seems odd to her, see her react in such a way, though. It's not like I ever saw her embarrassed before. I'd better be going. Farewell, Hisao. Bye. Whether it's out of habit or just a stubborn desire for one small fragment of normality, I held my end up in farewell just as I always do. At least I'm consciously aware that I'm doing it now. I think I'm beginning to see a bigger picture than I've ever before, not only with Lily, but also my life ahead. The chains of my past are finally breaking. Wait for it! The serious shit's about to happen soon! Oh god, my, my heart's not ready for this. My heart is not ready for this. Because with, with Emmy, it was so it was scary, because I, like, I felt like I felt was going to mess up. Walking up the now slightly more familiar corridor of the girls' dormitories, I can hear the faint sound of laughter coming up from up ahead. Probably Akira's. It doesn't take long to identify the source as Lily's room, though the deep timbre of the female voice unmistakably belongs not to her, but to her sister. I wrap my knuckles in the door with the usual three light taps, my hand barely retreating as the door swings open. Hey, Hisao! Hey, hello Lily, Hanako. And there's that picture again. Hanako looks tent up tentatively, her hands buried in her oversized p pink nightgown. From her side, Lily turns sideways toward the direction of my voice and smiles. <laughs> it would be fl a flickering right to say I dislike the sight of her in those pajamas. DIRTY BOY! <laughs> I catch Akira giving a sidelong side look with annoying grin in which I apply with a sharp glare. She takes the hint, shrugs, and walks back to the low table in the center of the room as I go to join her. Lily gives me a nod of greeting and starts pouring me a cup of tea. It's nice to see you again, Hanako. You've been getting around. You've been getting around recently. Lily wears a short look of concentration as the light brown liquid, carefully measured by her fingers as always, flows from the teapot into the cup. It seems Hanako is taking up helping one of the people in your class with the newspaper club. Now me, I think. Hanako gives an aff affirmative nod. Even after spending about two months in the class, I still have trouble remembering the names of those students I rarely talk with. It takes me a few mental contours just to connect the, same, the name with a face, but I eventually remember the girl that's beside Hanako in the back of the class. Naomi Inoue, a fairly average looking girl except for her bleach blonde hair. Given her upbeat and straightforward personality, Naomi may have seen an opening to pounce na pouch, poach Nanako for her club when she inquired about joining one. Either way, it's nice to see Hanako broadening her horizons, which I f when I first met her, the idea of joining a club w with anyone but Lily would <clears throat> have seemed utterly laughable. That explain how busy you've been. Enjoying it? Hmm, it's really interesting. As always, Hanako's far from being talkative. Some things never change. And it seems that Hanako's personality is one of them. She'll always she'll likely always be the shy one to shy away from being overly social. Social! <laughs> uh, warned, warned by the sound of cockery against the table, Lily gently places my drink in front of me. I thank her and take a long sip. Hanako and Lily are tending to their own, and a queer a queer and Akira is quaffing a mug of strong smelling black coffee. You're a lucky bastard, Hisao. Huh? I can't help grimacing at her teasing smile, still visible around the edges of the mug pressed into her lips. Seeing my sister in her pajamas, there's a lot of men out there who'd like to be where you are. <laughs> I love Akira! Akira's awesome! I've seen a lot more than that of her, not that I admit it. Akira? 
Hey, I'm just teasing. I guess I'm giving Akira that voice now. She leans over to me as much as she can, whispering with a sly grin written on her face. And Hanako too, you perv. Oh my god! The artwork on her face, Jesus Christ! Hey, it was her idea. Um, I, uh... We both look over to her, her face turned to the ground and her hands fidgeting in the lap of her nightgown. If it's Hisao, I don't mind. Ah, uh, this could be bad. I know Hanako's altogether too innocent to bother reading too much into such a thing, but the expression Akira directs at me is positively stormy. Um, Akira, please. It seems Lily can sense Akira's sudden change in aura just as well as I, even without seeing it for herself. Akira slowly looks away from me, like an attack dog leashed by its owner in the nick of time. I breathe a sigh of relief. Damn, Akira! <laughs> I can't think of a more appropriate time to try and change topics than around now. If you don't mind me asking, Akira, what do you do for a living? I've never seen you out of that suit. Thinking about that, what to do with yourself after school's over, eh? I'm a lawyer, for the most part. I work in the legal department of the Japanese branch of our family's company. The most boring possible answer, I suppose. Law's a pretty dry topic to most people. Kinda. Oh, you're not supposed to agree. <laughs> I swear, Akira, you look too much like a dude. Lily gives an amused giggle while holding a cup and tea teacup and saucer. Hanako quickly joining her, joining her. This friendly atmosphere between everyone is something I'd missed while Lily and I, Akira, were on their trip. While the dealings that I had with Hanako didn't help, I think just not having Lily around changed the mood. It's nice to be back. I missed you, Hisao, and you too, Hanako. Same goes for the both of us. I'm guessing your classmates were happy to see you back. In a manner of speaking, yes. Akira's amused snort shows she's well aware of at least attitude towards such figures of speech. I imagine she'd, she'd have to be, given how long they've been together. Did you have fun in Scotland? For a moment, I wonder why she's asking. It, it having been quite a while since they came back, but then I remembered everything that happened. We've simply not had time to look back with what exams in our Hokkaido trip. Lily's face goes distant for a moment, and the fact that Akira's first reaction is to look over it to her sister doesn't escape me. Nonetheless, she quickly collects herself. It was nice. I, we, hadn't met our family in such a long time. It was a wonderful reunion. Yeah, I guess that's right. Their house being beachside was the best part, though. From a dismissive tone, I get the feeling Akira doesn't like their family as much as Lily does. She only liked that because you finally had time to play around. Just because I'm the better swimmer. Why am I giving her a New Yorker accent? Jesus. I don't take after the athletic side of the family, that's all. Well, you can take heart in the fact that you got the height genes at least. And the bust genes. That's not really the right kind of thing to say around others. <coughs> is, is Akira jealous that she's flat-chested? <laughs> Oops, I didn't read that. Though Lily pretends to scold Akira, she does, not, she does so with an unmistakably slightly cheeky grin on her face. I doubt Akira really minds that, judging from her nonchalant expression. While I don't either, Hanukkah's looking down and blushing furiously beside me. The sisters' antics aside, their parents really do lead a bourgeoisie lifestyle. It seems utterly divorced from the life that Lily and Akira have lived until now. I suppose practically, they must have made decisions for them. Practicality, my bad. Jesus Christ. To have come from such a wealthy and well-connected lineage only adds to the almost noble air Lily seems to have, though it's only a small wonder that none of it seems to have rubbed off onto Akira. They really are just as alike, little alike as siblings could be. The only similarity seems to be that they shared confidence, which can both be endearing and a headache sometimes. Most of the night continues much the same, with Hanako eventually leaving the Sato sisters and me to ourselves as she heads back to her dorm room for a rest. For a while, only the barely audible sound from Lily's teacup and saucer can occasionally be heard as she slowly drinks. The silence is strained as Lily and I wait for the elephant in the room to be addressed. So... Lily dutifully puts her cup down, giving her sister undivided attention. With Lily and me on one side of the low table and Akira on the other, this almost feels like a judge passing down a verdict. I hear that you two are going out now. Why am I changing her voice so much? Uh, it's because Akira is a side character, so um, like I really don't like have a set voice for because I don't see her enough. Oh my god! I give you like a Brooklyn woman accent now, like I'm doing it. I glance sideways at Lily to confirm her as a source of Akira's knowledge. She gives a gentle nod to Akira, which I mirror in affirmation. Deciding that this is the proper time and place to do so, and Akira being the closest figure to a parent Lily's had for much of her life, I bow deeply on my hands before me, and my head very nearly the same. I'll take good care of your sister. Oh, ah! I'll take good care of your sister, Akira, I promise you. See, he's a lovely young gentleman. She must have heard my voice coming from a lower position than usual. 
I slowly bring myself back up, my eyes tentatively looking at the cure from under my brow. To tell the truth, I very much doubt my, suit, my suited judge will raise any objections. She's very well the type to make her disapproval well, with others well known, so that at least there to a, lends her a measure of respect in my eyes. The old-fashioned kind, huh? Well, oh, <coughs> the old-fashioned kind, huh? Well, he's the kind of person I guess you'd go for. Why am I going Harley Quinn? <laughs> I don't have a problem. Oh, fuck! I don't have a problem with it. I wish you two the best. Even if I didn't like it, I couldn't really do anything anyway. I offer a nod of appreciation to her as Lily gives a small sigh of relief, likely more out of duty than actually belief Akira might have had any problem with us being together. I do wonder, though, how's the rest of the family taking it, particularly the part residing in Yamaku? Have you told her? Smiles. Smiles turn to grimace as Akira grins downright evilly. Those closest know how to twist the knife best, after all. Putting up with it may be the best term for the situation. Don't you agree, Hisao? Yeah, that sounds about right. At least she's being reasonable reasonable about it. Good to hear. That girl could be a handful of the best of times. <laughs> Harley Quinn may not be the best uh, inspiration for Akira's voice. We sent a few messages back and forth during and after the trip, and she was already busting my chops to see my boyfriend when we came back. After leaving, he... He did give her so long, truly does care for the- WAIT THEY ARE DATING! OH MY GOD THEY ARE DATING! BUT THEY'RE COUSINS! No wait. Oh no 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 I'm, I'm no oh, wait 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 I misread it. Uh, see my boyfriend after we came after leaving her gave her so long, truly does care for the little guy. Maybe it just means that like um, that um, uh, Shizune was like, hey what about my little brother huh? Yeah, you go off to see your boyfriend. I may have misread it. Or they are dating, and I just can't... I can't put my finger on it. Someone help me. I cast my mind back to Shizune's odd reaction after telling her about our relationship, but decided not to bring it up. It's no doubt simply born of their mutual ant antipathy, and Akira's comment only to back that up. Well then, that's settled. Gotta go back to work early tomorrow, so I'd better be off. She rises from the table with a grunt, her hand on her knee to push herself up. I just notice Akira's eyes linger on Lily for a couple seconds before turning away as she begins to take her leave. Oh no, we're low again. We're low again, please no! Not again, I just want to go back to my dorm and study. <clears throat> After she walks out the door, she stops and looks up thoughtfully before turning <coughs> to us one last time. God, that burp was attractive. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to tell you. Use protection every time. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I knew someone was gonna say it. I gag violently on the tea in my mouth. Contrary to my own, this composure holds perfectly, and she seems entirely unfazed. I'm kind of impressed. We are. Don't worry. Add a girl. See us. No, my voice fits perfectly. Add a girl. See us. And with that, she turns and strides away, a hand held high as she disappears into the darkened hallway, closing the door behind her. The most reaction I can muster is flopping towards the table, and completely drained of energy and truly exhausted by her. Lily's ability to hold her own against that suited devil is something I admire. She really is incredibly blunt. I don't think I'll ever be able to keep up with your sister's energy. As I feel Lily's soft head come to rest on my own, I roll my head to the side to see her gently smiling. For a long time, we simply sit beside each other silently. Given her unquestionably unusual height, she's pretty much exactly as tall as I am, probably a couple of centimeters higher if anything. Like this, she appears even taller. The feeling of her pale, soft hand against smile is a pleasant one, as it is as is the slight of the thin, silken pajamas she wears, showing her curves and collarbone. You do get on well, though, even if you do say that. I guess, you know, you two are a lot more alike than I first thought when I met you. Then it's a good thing I quickly stopped you from going after her, isn't it? Though she jokes about it, my assessment of my inability to keep up with Akira, either physically or mentally, is quite in, was quite in earnest. <clears throat> Lily's slow-paced and ladylike, almost motherly nature is perhaps the single thing that helped me most in my first weeks at Yamaku. Come to think of it, wait, since we're since when we were using protection? Whoa, 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 boy! As I give a curious look at my side, Lily's cheeks puff out as she huffs at me. Unlike you, I remember the packet is in my cupboard next to the sink. Oh, so I'm not the only one that, so I'm not the only one that thinks, uh, so I'm not the only one of us that takes a pill. In hindsight, I feel rather thoughtless for not remembering all at all and leaving it to Lily. You asshole! Jesus Christ! She could have gotten pregnant, you bitch! Ugh! 
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm really, I'm really adamant about using protection before you're ready. For a kid, anyway. Looking over to the cupboard she mentioned, I noticed that, again the knee-high pill piles of books around us and that were here the other times I visited. For the most part, they're lined up against the wall to give a little more room around the table. Why don't you get a bookshelf for your books? It's odd to see your books just piled around, especially given that the room looks so neat and orderly otherwise. They're easier to find this way. I know exactly which each pile of book each book is in. Wouldn't you still know that after putting each set on a different shelf? That may be, but... So she's not immune to the bouts of laziness after all. You have so many things- oh, many of them. It's kind of a shame that we can't share book sets despite both of us reading so much. She gives a short giggle. Come to think of it, why do you order your books through y Yuko? I imagine there'd be plenty of sites you could order books in Braille from, especially in English Braille. There are a lot of text-to-speech programs, too. She turns her head slightly away from me, which strikes me as somewhat surprising. I'm just not all that good with computers. I'm alright with typewriters and brailers, but that's about it. Well, you know, he saw She's blind! <laughs> her tone almost makes me chuckle. She's a prideful person, so admitting something like that must be difficult. So Lily's the low-tech kind of person, given her old-fashioned personality. It's not that kind of really a stunning surprise. I wouldn't worry about it. A lot of people aren't really that good with them, so it's not that unusual. That's... unusual. Now, she's even more depressed. I feel like I'm twisting the knife, rather than healing her wounds. With a bit of squeamish... Squirming, I shuffle my way closer to her, tentatively putting one hand around her waist to hug her. I'm still not really used to this kind of physical affection, but still, Lily seems to like it. Well, she has no other way of affection. You, you can't have eye sex. Not again. Not again. <laughs> Lily smiles and turns to face me, a kiss being the reward for giving in to her. She draws me in, brushing my upper lip with her as, before pressing against both. This way, every one of my senses is filled with her. And the barely perceptible scent of her hair, her ta taste as her tongue fleetingly touches mine, the tenderness of her lips, the image of her filling my mind, the total silence apart from her faint breath. We may have kissed before, but even in, if this is more of a kiss of simple affection than anything, it's still a new and pleasant sensation. Judging from her vivid blush as she pulls back, she, it's obvious she feels the same as I do. Even if we're entirely alone, it still feels a little embarrassing to open up to each other this much. If we take everything day by day, I think it will be for the best. Small te small steps, right? Yeah, just small steps. We have plenty of time to be together, even after the school year's over. As long as we move together, I think everything will work out okay. Neither of us is going anywhere soon, after all. For now, I'm just thankful for the small amount of time we could spend together. Okay, good. I was hoping the scene was going to end soon, because I have to end the part. I'm already over time by like four minutes. <sighs> So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you liked this video, hit the like button. If you, want to see if you want to see more videos from me or from this series, hit that subscribe button. And you are now exiting the Shadyverse. My name is Shades, and I hope you've enjoyed your day in the shade. See you guys later. And judging by the fact that we're standing right in front of the nurse's office, I feel like the bad's about to happen. So anyway, see you guys later.